this week's grind episode, let's understand a little bit more about underspins. Stay tuned. So underspins are widely used in the freshwater market, but in the saltwater market, we're still trying to figure out, I think, whether or not they have some utility, right? And so the last couple weeks have been actually throwing them quite a bit, and I've really found that they have a really, really good upside on those really tough bites. And so when we're talking about an underspin, we're basically talking about a jig head uh, with an offset blade, right, on the bottom, that when you retrieve the bait, it adds some additional flash to the actual bait itself. And that's where I've found a lot of utility uh, throwing these. And so uh, just recently, uh, a couple trips ago, um, I actually threw this particular one, and I'll talk about the different brands here in a sec, of which ones to use, but it was a tougher bite, and I was throwing just a traditional style, you know, soft plastic, kind of working a small, you know, ledge, and I could see some bait, but I was either in between a tide change or something that bite just hadn't picked up yet. And so what I started to do was, if I could get a more of a reaction strike, I could add a little bit more flash uh, to the actual bait itself. And so casting it out, kind of working it just like a jig where you'd pop up, kind of lift your rod, pop up, lift your rod, and then reel in and then do it again. And what would happen was, is I went from getting really no bites on a traditional style jig uh, to then going over to a blade, I'm sorry, a uh, underspin, and I was able to start picking up just a few bites, right? One here, one there, so it'd be like one here, 10 casts later, pick another one up, three casts later, get another bite, two casts later, you know, get another bite, and then another five casts, you catch one. And I was able to kind of start picking up that bite, whether or not the bite was picking up or firing up that school to kind of get them, get them going. That's where I feel an underspin uh, has some utility in the saltwater market, right? And so um, con consider them, right? When the bait's, I'm sorry, when the bite is tough, bust them out and, and try to get that bite going, try to get that reaction strike, right? Where those fish are there, they're just not wanting to feed, right? They might be posturing on that ledge, they might be posturing on a flat or in some potholes, but they're not actively feeding. We want to add maybe a little bit more flash to the bait itself just to provide a little bit of something extra to maybe invoke that strike, right? To maybe uh, in, incite that lateral line to where now that fish that's not in a feeding response is now in that feeding response. And if there's a pile of fish there, you can probably get them going, which I felt was the case uh, during the last trip. So let's talk about some of the brands here in just a sec. All right, so these have been around the freshwater market for an awfully long time, and they have an absolute ton of selection uh, from different brand manufacturers. Now, the thing you need to know is that if you're a saltwater angler, you almost always buy uh, multiple jig heads per pack, right? Four to five jig heads per pack, um, roughly around like that four to six dollar range, if you will. You can go obviously certainly much cheaper, but in these, you're almost gonna only buy one per pack. They're sold pretty much one per pack. And if you think about it this way, they're almost like buying a separate lure. So like you would buy a Corky or a Fat, I'm sorry, a Fat Boy or a pack of a lures or a jerk bait or something along those lines where you're buying the actual lure itself. Um, these are kind of those same way. You're not gonna buy multiple per pack. The also other thing to know about kind of underspins is that underspins and a lot of the brand manufacturers do not sell them less than a quarter ounce weight. And so for me, I throw a lot of 16th, a lot of eighth ounce on the flats. And so the lightest that I've found uh, is really the Spin Tricks 316s, which has been a really, really good high quality underspin, as well as the less than under, <laughs> it's not very good quality at all, which is a Strike King, which they make an eighth ounce. Uh, and I'll talk about that here in a sec. But I pulled the sleeves basically out of there um, just from a glare perspective to kind of see that. But the Spin Tricks has really been one that I've really kind of go, I've been going to a lot. So this is that Spin Tricks, this is that 3 16th ounce. Um, it's really a 4 aught hook. Basically, it has a really, really unique, it almost looks kind of weird, alien-like, if you will. But that's basically um, the hanger, if you will, uh, coming off the bottom side of the bait. It gives a lot of clearance, so if you did want to upsize, this is a down south, 
the, the C shed, the smaller version of that, but it does if you're throwing like any sort of big paddle tails or boots, boot tail baits like the six cents divine or something along those lines, um, you can get away with that, right, on these. Now the good thing about it is it has a really good quality barrel swivel as well as a blade itself. And I also like the kind of uh, like 45 line tie coming off the head itself. Now when you're twitching this, obviously it's given a lot of flash and so I'll work it again just like a jig. And so as it's coming down uh, that column, it's just providing a little bit of flash again to incite and give a little bit more presence uh, for those soft plastics. Now, uh, this one has been kind of the, the best one I've found in terms of production. Um, and I don't know why, but it's just a really, really good quality underspin. The other one I've had really good success on is this Warbaits. Um, and so that's this one right here. Also kind of a 45 line tie coming off. This is also a 4 uh, So it really does pair well with the down south or any basically soft plastics that you have is about a four inch, right? These six inch divines, if you are looking to kind of go up to like a boot tail style um, soft plastic, these uh, six cents divine and the four inch version are actually really nice. Um, but again, 45 degree line tie coming off the head itself. And then also too, you can see basic really, really heavy gauge wire coming off the bottom. Um, and then also to really good quality barrel swivel. And this one's a gold blade. This is actually the biggest blade that I have uh, in my underspin collection. Uh, and it's been really, really productive as well. The other ones I've had some production on um, has been that, uh, that Strike King. And it's been okay. Uh, you can tell though on the bottom side, it's just you know not as good quality on the bottom. And then it's just a really, really small uh, barrel swivel and uh, it just you can kind of tell it doesn't provide that action and it and allow that blade to kind of flutter if you will a lot more freely and then lastly um, this is that six cents divine and so on this one I'm sorry it's that six yeah six cents divine underspin my bad my bad uh, for this one the only thing I don't like about it and I only pair it with a boot top like a really really small boot tail uh, soft plastic is the line tie is a 90 degree off the actual head itself. And so I feel like it fishes a lot deeper than what I'm intending it to. And so typically I'll throw these, uh, and this is a three inch Cajun lures. Um, I think it's like a marshmallow or something like that. But in short, if I'm more like cast and retrieving, instead of like actually working it super slow through the column, I'll actually throw this one if it's more of kind of like a retrieval bite. But in short, the 90 degree line tie coming off, I'll go straight to it, like polymer knot, straight to this, and then basically straight retrieve that, and it allows a lot of vibration, a lot of kick, and then I'll pause that bait, and I'll get it going again. But for traditional style jigging, on the flats, you know, anything from like waist deep or less, these are actually really good. So this is a 3 16th, so it actually looks a lot bigger, but it's pretty slender. Uh, this is that spin tricks, and then this is the war baits, and then this is a quarter round. So other than that, really good underspins uh, for hopefully inciting that bite and getting a bite going uh, to where now you can switch back over to, to, to your traditional style soft plastics and then really, really put it to them. So next time you are in a lull uh, for kind of trying to just get bit, trying to get some confidence back, uh, trying to maybe figure out whether those fish are and how they're setting up, that's the best way to go. So definitely check out the underspins. Hopefully this is helpful. I'll leave all the links um, to these baits and these underspins in the description below. Let us know in the comments as well what you want to see. Um, these are things that I'm just exploring with, right? And I'm passing on to you what I feel and what I'm seeing to hopefully you know, be helpful for you in your next trip. So again, leave us a comment below, like the video, share it if you can. Um, and also to let us know if there's anything you want to hear. So until next time, guys, tight lines, God bless. Hopefully this has been helpful and God bless.